Yes, I was not very happy that I had to pick up uh, after Pamela and Sydney, so you'll have to forgive me if it's not the, quite the same level. Um, but I have to talk about what happens when we go from the single species world to the species world where you have more than one species in your ecosystem. Well, just to begin with, the, the MSY is about managing fish stocks to get the highest possible yield. And when it was developed, as Pamela says, you know, it, it's difficult enough in a single species world. Maybe there's no need to actually make it more difficult but by putting it into a multi-species world. But the reality is that fish stocks do not exist in isolation. So what can you actually do in these cases? Can you actually still get maximum yield of them? First of all, this is a th thing that uh, we've discussed very much in the multi-species uh, assessment working group that I'm uh, chairing. It is what happens actually when you increase fishing mortality, what happens to your FMSY. Um, we did not look at BMSYs as in our work, the, the prime focus has been on FMSY and setting that rather than actually looking at what the yield would be as that would vary from year to year and also what the biomass would be. Uh, this is an example for a very North Sea cod-like species with a low natural mortality. So you have a um, range, I don't know, there's no point here. Over here you have the start of the curve where you uh, increase your yield as fishing mortality increases. Then you get what we call growth over fishing. So you fish a little too much, the, start, the yield begins to decrease. Up here you get to recruitment problems. Then you really get in trouble and get a very low yield. So this is somewhere you really don't want to go. But up here, as you can see, you have a pretty maybe a flat top curve with some indication of a top. But what happens when you increase natural mortality? Well, two things happen here. First of all, the total yield decreases. So the yield you will get will decrease. If you have more predators eating your stuff, you can't harvest it. The other thing that happens, which is perhaps so not so easy to see, is that the top point of the curve, the fishing mortality, which gives you the top point of the curve, moves uh, to this side. So you get a higher fishing mortality, which is FMSY. But you also get another effect. So over here, you get a move of the, the, the point that you really didn't want to go to, the point where you get recruitment failure. That also narrows so all in together. You get a very uh, a much narrower range of the plateau thing that Sydney talked about. So here you have a really wide plateau on the purple one. The plateau becomes much narrower. Yes, so to, to uh, see what happens, well, you actually get lower yields, so more natural mortality, lower yields. You get higher uh, max points of the curve. You get a lower, um, this level here, the place you don't want to go. And you also get a smaller range of the, the fishing mortalities that will give you something close to MSY. So you're contract, uh, contracting your, your region there. So what does it mean uh, to MSY management compared to the single species? Well, if you have a small natural mortalities, uh, it will give you a higher yield. And you have a large range of fishing mortalities that gives you close to FMS, uh, MSY. So you'll have you know, a pretty large part to play in. Um, if you do this and you add more species or more predators to your system, you increase your predator stocks, as we're doing when we rebuild the stocks. What will happen is that you will actually increase natural mortalities for many of the stocks as they are eaten, basically and their range of close to MSY is going to decrease. So right now we aim for MSY um, of the single species, and then we have regular updates according to biological parameters, whatever changes, selection patterns, for example, in the European area, but we're not taking care of this yet. Uh, but we are looking at it though. Uh, so this is a brand uh, new uh, example from the WK Malta, <coughs> which is uh, a working group of uh, ISIS on multi-species in the Baltic. Um, and it's, uh, I often get blamed for being too complicated, but this is the yield of cod, the yield of herring, and the yield of sprat. So t three interacting species in the Baltic. Cod eats the herring and the sprat. And what is down here is fishing mortality of cod. So what you get over here is the yield curve of cod, similar to what I showed before. So this is a stochastic simulation. It includes a stock recruitment relationship. So it's, uh, it, it's not a deterministic model, what, as Pamela pointed out. And you can see what we usually see as you increase fishing mortality, you reach a top point, and then it doesn't level off that much. You see that sometimes, but at least you have a, a top point in there somewhere. But you also see that over here, <coughs> the range of yields you can get for herring is actually changing a lot. So when you increase fishing mortality on cod, which would eat the herring, you remove the predators, and you can actually take a much larger yield out of this species without any changes uh, to the fishing mortality on them. And the same thing for sprag. So it really has a large effect if you try to rebuild your predator stock. You're going to see, as you rebuild, 
more predators, you're going to see your yield going down in these areas. So that is corresponds to having a low fishing mortality on them. Well, that was the nice and stochastic. I also have a, a nice and deterministic <laughs> version. We did um, do both, but this one is uh, actually showing the main points, uh, but it is a, though it is a deterministic uh, model. It's from 1991, so it's more than 10 years old, and Henry Gislason did it. And um, it shows here the fishing efforts on sprat and herring, so it's the pelagic fishing effort in the Baltic, and up here it's the fishing effort on cod. Uh, this colored plot shows the yield in tons. So it's the sum of the yields of cod and, and herring, and it's on a single species model. So what happens is if you pick you know, some uh, constant fishing mortality of cod up here, your yield of uh, pelagics will increase and then <laughs> decrease again. But there is no correlation between the two. They basically do not affect each other. And if you just can get your fishery to the start, you'll be happy and get the highest maximum possible yield. So. So the problem starts when you let the cod eat something. Yes, sorry? Then you must wait for the microphone, I think. You can, yes, if you will wait, it's, it's okay to have it. Are you applying constant fishing mortality? In this determine in the other one, this one up here, this has a harvest control rule that has a level of FMSY at the or th this level is the top level then, and then it has as the stock if the stock decreases, it will decrease fishing mortality. It's an average over a hundred years, so it's what you set a long term average. Yes, okay. the other one is deterministic. This one doesn't, but they uh, get the same results basically. Okay, here's the problem. We have the cod. The cod eats the pelagics. So uh, where we before we had a joint yield that was highest when we were at this star. Then now it is so that if we increase fishing mortality of cod, we actually increase our yield a lot because uh, we are now able to catch herring and spread. And letting the herring and spread pass through a cod, we lose a lot of biomass. So to get the most biomass, you basically have to annihilate the cod. Not a very good result. We try to get rid of that by taking care of the fact that maybe you do not want to land the most possible tons from the Baltic. Maybe you actually wanted the most possible landed value instead. Um, because the cod are much more valuable than the herring and it could be a good idea to do that way. So in this example, Henrik just um, assumed that the value of the cod was 10 times that of the pelagic fish. If you do that, you end up somewhat lower, but you still have a maximum area where you have a higher fishing effort than co of cod than you had in the single species, and you also have a higher fishing effort for the other species. So you do end up that you, you have to fish harder to get the maximum value landed. Yes, so that was the one problem we have. But there are more problems of the same kind, because there's also the issue of the species being caught in the same fisheries. So this is a uh, uh, I've showed this to managers and they don't like it. They say, how can you manage this? This is the catch compositions of uh, 52 fleets in the North Sea, which catch uh, North Sea cod. So the black is the cod and the, the other ones are other species. <laughs> we basically have a lot of fleets with a very different catch composition, but as you can see, though some of them are pretty good at catching cod, the majority of them catch cod together with something else. And what happens then? Can you actually get the MSY of these uh, fish in the mixed fisheries at the same time? This was the cod curve from before. If you have an MSY, that's fine. Uh, let's add two other species. They, they catch a lot in the same fishery. So that's uh, haddock and saith in there. And as you can see, they don't have the maximum at the same point. So you can't actually fish these three stocks. If you have a fishing gear where one effort day is the same fishing mortality on all, you cannot fish them at MSY, all of them, at the same time. What you can do, though, is what uh, Sydney also suggested. You can look at the range where you get a reasonably high proportion of your MSY. So if you would instead define a range, I just put them randomly, I didn't really calculate much, but if you define a range where you have a reasonable proportion of your MSY and say, okay, I just want to be within that range, you can actually find an overlapping area here in the middle where you can get all three species as something close to MSY. Not exactly, but close. And the next problem comes because these species are caught together, but they also have um, fishing mortality levels that you don't want to go beyond because you don't want recruitment impairment. And these are, uh, these are the ones for the three species. So this is haddock that is down here. So basically you cannot fish haddock with a fishing mortality of more than 0.5, uh, 
and still have a sustainable fishery. So this is one of the, the things that will go wrong for you if you try to stay in that uh, area of overlapping. You'll basically be on the wrong side of the haddock. So you're going to end up for this fishery in a situation where you cannot have maximum sustainable yield of all three species and still have a sustained haddock population. Uh, this, I, th I know they've worked with this in the States as well, and they've referred to it as a choke species. So this species is choking the rest of the fishery. Everything has to stop to protect the haddock, basically. So there are two issues here. Uh, one is you will hit the choke species, but there's also how do you actually find out where in that region that you want to have MSY, where you have <coughs> approximately MSY of these three stocks. Where do you want to be? Do you want to be in the green end, where you get a lot of cod? Or do you want to be in the blue or purple end, where you get more haddock? Now, who is deciding where to go in that region. Okay, I'm just summing it up here in the end. Um, first of all, large fish eat small fish. And if it happens all the time, even if you ignore it, they still eat small fish. And as you rebuild your predatory stocks, you're going to change things for your prey stocks as well. And uh, you're, in particular, you're going to reduce the range of fishing mortalities you can induce on the prey fish. If you sum uh, the maximum sustainable yield of a lot of uh, stocks together in this way, it usually ends up telling you that you have to eliminate the predators. So we tried this also for the North Sea and it tells us to kill the whiting. So it, it comes up with pretty much the same result. Get rid of the ones that are eating stuff. And it, somehow that's not a very good result. In some cases, at least in some of the cases we looked at, if you weigh them according to their value, you get a better result. So you actually get you know, it's possible to have more than one species or a couple of species in the bottom of the food chain if you weigh them according to value. So it could be possible to do it that way. For the mixed fisheries, you can't get the MSY of all of them at the same time, but you can probably get something close. But for the two cases in common is that you can, you know, you can pretend that this doesn't exist, but it'll cost someone anyway. So if you pretend that there's no interaction between predatory fish and prey fish, uh, which is currently the, the way we're going for the Baltic, in spite of the knowledge, uh, you will have a situation where you're rebuilding the cod stock and you're, proposing, or you're making a large impact on the prey stocks, but it's not really an open decision. It's just something that happens along the way because you manage them separately. So it's just that at some point you will have to trade these things off against each other. And even if you don't make the trade off, you are still making it implicitly. So. Thank you.